Moving forward. I won't share with you uh, research findings uh, as Juliette did, but uh, just a few illustrated thoughts. I'm quoting from uh, Marc Dumont about the plasticity of peri-urban spaces in order to give rise to new forms of mobility. And uh, this plasticity of peri-urban forms is something that we can think about with the example of shopping centers. Right. Well, uh, shopping malls, shopping centers, uh, we all know what they are, big uh, concentrations of uh, what are known as hypermarkets. Uh, well, they were, there's an American model, but they were certainly taken up in France. And uh, we know that these uh, shopping centers were located outside the cities, uh, close to uh, highway ex uh, interchanges or um, uh, other such uh, road connection. Now, uh, comparing to other European countries, we find that uh, there are differences, significant differences. Credoc uh, says that the, the market share of uh, hypermarkets, more than 25 uh, square, 2,500 square meters, you have uh, big differences, 53% in France and the UK, but only 33% in Germany and only 4% in the Netherlands. So there are big uh, variations. Uh, it is also due to legislation that uh, may or may not allow these things to exist. Now, uh, hypermarkets are here to stay, and uh, especially uh, with the existence of the automobile. But you might uh, wonder what and how uh, the advent of, uh, well, the new deal with automobiles may have an effect on the presence of shopping malls. Well, of course, uh, retailers and, uh, and these uh, retail in general has found that there is uh, more demand for convenience uh, stores, but it's, it's true in the cities and in in, uh, the immediate outskirts in the immediate uh, suburbs, but it is also emerging in peri, uh, in the peri-urban context. And then, of course, the the presence of uh, public transportation makes a big difference to the retail industry. Uh, Auchan says that uh, in its uh, center near Toulouse in uh, Gramont, the share of uh, Customers coming, uh, taking the subway to get there has uh, jumped from 18 to 35 percent, and they account for 20 percent of uh, sales. I mean, they, they, they don't have a car; they don't. They, they, they have. They, 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 they cannot uh, take. Uh, they have smaller cars, but still, they, it is a significant. Uh, number. And then uh, there's the development of uh, e-commerce and m-commerce uh, using uh, mobile phones. And then you can have connections between places where you have uh, places you, you may wish to buy, but you don't need to take them physically. You can, uh, you can order them. You can walk into a shopping center and leave empty-handed, but with the orders uh, already on your cell phone or ready to be made later. So that's a new mode of shopping. That means that you don't need to be uh, physically mobile to, to do your shopping. So the, the, there is a new deal. And so surveys about uh, uh, surveys amongst uh, households have found that uh, uh, still a significant uh, portion of uh, shopping is done in these hypermarkets. But uh, some people walk uh, to the local market. But of course, uh, walking to the hypermarket, to the shopping center, is usually not a, uh, a feasible proposition. So we looked at um, a, a new question. Let's look at the way in which the shopping uh, centers are, how well are they integrated in the periphery, in the peri-urban areas around uh, Paris, and what uh, uh, alternatives are there to get there instead of uh, driving there? or public transportation? Can you walk there? Can you cycle there? Well, we looked at uh, 24 uh, shopping centers with at least two retail stores in them. Number one, I mean, this is rather straightforward, but self-evident, but these uh, 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 shopping centers, uh, these peri-urban shopping centers, well, you have people living there. One inhabitant in two lives le less than three kilometers away from these uh, shopping malls. So these uh, uh, radiuses, uh, I mean, the distance, the proximity distance is significant because uh, if you live within a kilometer, that, uh, of course, uh, is paradoxically the 
Well, it's the nearest, and at the same time, it's uh, poorly served by, I mean, you have to drive there, basically. It's too short, too long to walk, and there are no uh, other links. Now, it's not a matter of judgment saying this is good or bad, but is, are there ways of making things uh, more convenient? Now, uh, we know that uh, peri uh, urbanites are vi very diverse, but so are the shopping centers in terms of uh, uh, urban integration. Upstairs, you can see the map of Lille. Adam, a shopping center out of nowhere, uh, only related to the world, the rest of the world by a road. Then you have uh, uh, shopping malls that are uh, uh, in continuation of the urban fabric, but uh, there's a, there is a uh, a a. Um, a separation that makes it impossible for pedestrians uh, to have access, and you have four sites in that uh, in that case, and then you have uh, other sites in Isanville. That's a picture on the right-hand side where uh, they are within the city. It's they're uh, relatively accessible. You can walk there, you can cycle there, but but uh, it is an ex post facto situation. That's not the way it was designed, but the city uh, has adapted and made that possible. And then you have eight interesting cases where you have integration potentials that are not that have not been uh, uh, used uh, in other words you, you, uh, you could easily uh, remedy this you only need a, a pedestrian pathway and uh, and it's just a matter of doing it and then you have one of the best integrated center is the one in Sarcel Sarcel is well integrated uh, it is uh, well Sarcel is where uh, you a model was designed to have the multi-purpose uh, development where you can have housing as well as retail, as well as um, uh, as office buildings uh, in the, or office space in the same in the same buildings. Now, uh, is this uh, where is this? Uh, l l where land is the least expensive. In fact, no, it's the other way around. Uh, usually, the, the the more expensive the land, the better integrated the, the places. And is there a connection between uh, pedestrian or cycle uh, access and the age uh, of these shopping centers? Some are old, some are new, uh, some are accessible, some aren't, but it, there's no connection. But the other interesting point is that uh, some of these uh, places are potentially accessible, and, uh, and and so it could and should be done, but it would require uh, some investment, but not much. A, a small investment is all it would take to make these uh, uh, shopping malls uh, accessible to pedestrians or cyclists. Now, why why is it difficult? I mean, this morning we said well, it's, it's fairly easy, but uh, there are there are blocks, people mental blocks or something. Well, uh, there are logistical issues. I mean, for instance, for uh, for delivery. Uh, you, 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 you have uh, you, you, you have to make the stores accessible to delivery trucks, etc. So it's not as easy as all that. Uh, uh, also, when you see Taverny, uh, there's an issue of uh, safety. You have shops uh, that need to be secured because uh, you have people in uh, who go to shopping malls whom you would not want to see in residential areas, and uh, so uh, you have to strike the right balance. And then there's another thing. I didn't expect there to be a, a day in here, but a, a picture of Copenhagen, and you can see that on a shopping mall there, you can have you can have bicycles. It does exist, and you can see it on the right-hand side where you have the uh, the pedestrian pathway, which is rather uh, odd, but uh, it was done ex post facto. It used to be, I mean, people used to think it uh, it is unthinkable to cross the street to go to a shopping mall, but there you have it. People realized it could be done, and it was done uh, af uh, after the fact. Now, uh, what? What can you do? What can you do when you have these big uh, retail uh, areas, shopping areas, uh, and and you want to uh, sort of uh, integrate them uh, within the uh, urban uh, or peri-urban fabric? Well, of course, you have a new urbanism. The, this, this is a movement in the U.S. trying to uh, recycle, as it were, uh, the, the, the sprawl repair manual. They're trying to rehabilitate uh, places that are sort of uh, disconnected from the rest of the world and uh, that can uh, get uh, back to uh, uh, the mainstream. It's a bit naive. If you look at the le on the left-hand side, you have big parking areas. But you said, well, instead of the parking areas, you have uh, uh, buildings, a bit like the Hostman time buildings, uh, uh, multi-purpose with uh, office or retail on the, f on the ground floors, and then uh, housing units, residential units. Uh, above, but I mean, that's a bit naive. It looks very nice, uh, aesthetically, fair enough, but uh, 
uh, how functional would such a city be? I mean, uh, uh, they don't. I mean, it looks nice, but it doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't function. You can't. I mean, that would uh, require all sorts of other uh, arrangements. So, uh, uh, having left this sort of naive uh, sort of uh, uh, idea, we can move on to something more um, analytic. You can see that the way uh, uh, the uh, accessibility network works is that you have have nodes uh, within that network, but these nodes, these hubs almost, could be places of interoperability or uh, uh, intermodality that is you that because you have this uh, uh, network node this is where you can switch from the car to another form of transportation I mean that idea made sense it was developed by two students who are here Etienne Labirin and Clément Jacquemer who uh, uh, thought about this so uh, but this assumes that you still have I mean you using the same network and so the the, the blue triangle are residential and the green uh, star is uh, is um, uh, corporate uh, 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 building, but uh, and, and and then you so you're using you you're not changing that, and then uh, there is a uh, another uh, option which is to simply have more pathways. But I mean, it's uh, uh, it's not always easy. But the idea is to have uh, instead of having a, a partitioned. Uh, situation by creating these uh, pathways and, and, and small streets, you could uh, overcome this partition. That's the th thing in the middle. And then uh, on the right hand side, that's, that's the American uh, concept um, centrality, what we call, well, going back to a, a, a situation where in the center you have a, a sort of a conglomeration of everything. So on these clusters, you recreate uh, the historical. Uh, centrality where a thing was uh, uh, within a small center, you had a bit of everything. So uh, uh, residential, uh, office, and, 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 and of course, retail. Now, uh, the, the, all jumbled up, as it were. Now, uh, this center business centrality concept does work because you, for instance, you have shopping centers close to train stations, etc. It does exist, but it's not that common. So, um, uh, and of course, ideally, when, uh, when everything is nearby, uh, when you have a, a sort of a, a centrally arranged uh, system, it is a bit naive, too. I mean, and I would rather be an advocate of uh, the the the, uh, the medium uh, the, the thing in the middle where you still have a fairly scattered uh, area where but with connections with possible streets and pathways that would make it workable and less uh, less dense uh, uh, and more reasonable. That's my idea. And then there was a text by Jean Rémy, who developed another uh, concept, what he calls cent uh, uh, centration. So you do have the historical center, etc. But these places are not geographically located in one center. They can be. They can be uh, demultiplied. They can be sort of, uh, in a way, scattered in uh, in clusters. Uh, and that, in a way, is reflects the structure of. Uh, of the peri-urban uh, uh, structure. And, and, and so when uh, arranging for access by car or otherwise, uh, you uh, do not uh, necessarily need to recreate uh, the, uh, the network of, uh, of shops because you already have this in historical cities. Right. Uh, that, I mean, uh, that, that is why you'd rather talk about a fringe or why Marc Dumont referred to a periphery, but why not? Uh, I mean, this is like uh, poly, well, polycentrism, meaning uh, uh, multiple, multiple poles or multiple uh, clusters. But I mean, here in, uh, in your peri-urban context, you are imagining a situation where uh, you have a network where central nodes uh, uh, are, where uh, where all the where all the action is organized, all the all life is organized. Well, yes, but it does exist. I mean, you do have nodes where 
uh, you have both uh, uh, retail areas uh, and uh, and uh, office uh, space. But in this concept of, uh, of uh, centralization, I mean, you have situations where you have uh, a clustering of things, where you have uh, uh, office space, uh, uh, you have uh, factories or plants or, or whatnot, you have a retail, you have temporary uh, where, where things where uh, festivals take place, etc. So, and then well, so, so there's a functional center, there's also the geographical center, and historically that always has existed. But what I'm saying is that uh, you may, uh, the, these uh, center, center points are not necessarily identical to the places where the, uh, the flow of uh, people converge. I mean, and um, uh, what we do have uh, in the, uh, the peri-urban context is this uh, disseminated centrality. In other words, you have uh, uh, islands or nodes or, or clusters here and there uh, uh, that do exist and, that, uh, and whose geography should be taken on board. Yes, but uh, I don't quite see how, if you stick to that, you should be able to um, have less use of a car to drive to the supermarket or the hypermarket. No, uh, I mean, I believe that because of this, uh, you will need the car to, uh, to uh, do your shopping in peri-urban uh, areas, at least in the next decade. But the interesting thing is when you look at alternative solutions when, and the ways in which to, uh, to, uh, to get to wherever you want through other modes, it makes you think of other aspects, uh, uh, sort of a well-being and etc. So when, we, when you want to look for uh, other solutions, I mean, we can't just decide overnight, right, we'll do away with cars and do otherwise. In some cases, you can. But the idea is that when you you introduce these new modes, then there are other consequences, different ways in which uh, life is organized or the city is organized, and that can be a win-win thing as well. Well, thank you very much.